I want to take a few minutes to talk about the historicity of Jesus. I mean, are we really to believe that some God-man hybrid walked the earth about 2,000 years ago? In the grand scheme of things, 2,000 years is not that long ago. I mean, think about it this way. 100 years ago, the Titanic sank. 500 years ago, Christopher Columbus discovers America. 1,000 years ago, we're in the Middle Ages. 2,000 years ago, Jesus. So many people, when they think of the story of Jesus, they think of it in the same way as modern day superhero movies. Positive, entertaining, but clearly fictional. And I just don't know how we got this far to think this way, because history cries out a very different story. The more research that I've done on this, especially as of late, I'm more convinced than ever that Jesus came, he lived, he died, and spoiler alert, he rose again. I don't believe this because my parents believe it. I don't believe this because I grew up in church. But man, I've put in the work. And history, it points to this reality. Think about this. Our Gregorian calendar is broken up by BC and AD, literally meaning before Christ and Anno Domini, literally meaning in the year of our Lord. So history as we know it is divided in two eras before Jesus and after Jesus. There's plenty of extra biblical evidence that points to this truth. It's not just the Bible for Christians. But let's go on that journey. In 40 AD, a Jewish historian named Josephus wrote a book called The Antiquities of the Jews. And in it he says that John the Baptist was killed by Herod. And he references Jesus and says, who was called the Christ and that his brother James was put to death by the Pharisees for preaching the gospel. In 64 AD, a Roman historian named Tacitus documented that the Emperor Nero put Christians to death for preaching the mysterious superstition of Christ's resurrection. Again, these are sources outside of the Bible that are documented history showing the reality of Jesus' life. And there's plenty of evidence for his life, but perhaps even more for his death and his resurrection. You see, people proclaiming that Jesus is now alive after people saw him put to death created quite a problem for those who had him killed. And in Matthew 28, it says that the Jews bribed the Roman soldiers to say that the disciples stole his body. Now this was confirmed in another extra biblical document called the Talitith Yesu, saying that Jesus' body was stolen. So the Jews agreed that Jesus' body was no longer in the grave. And they had to, because the disciples and the followers who were preaching that Jesus was risen again, you see, they preached this message not in some obscure place where they could go make up some nonsensical religion that nobody could validate or disprove, but they preached it right on home turf in Jerusalem, where Jesus was killed and buried. He was buried in Joseph of Arimathea's tomb. Joseph was a popular Jewish leader, and it would have been very, very easy to disprove these claims that Jesus was no longer in the grave. They could just go right there and see. But he wasn't there. Now, we've got to talk about the martyrdom of the disciples, because we know there were many, many disciples, more than the 12 main ones that we know about. But of those 12, 10 out of the 12 were all killed for preaching the gospel that Jesus rose again. What about the other two? Well, one was Judas. He betrayed Jesus and then killed himself. The other was John, who they tried to kill by boiling him alive. When he survived, they exiled him to an island where he lived in isolation for the rest of his life. Now, lastly, in regards to the accuracy and validity of the Bible, between 1947 and 1956, ancient manuscripts were excavated from 11 different caves on the northwestern shore of the Dead Sea, known as the Dead Sea Scrolls. These books contain hundreds of prophecies of Jesus, hundreds of years before he was born. They're the oldest manuscripts that we have of the Bible today, over a thousand years older than the most recent copy of Isaiah, written most likely between 200 BC and 68 AD. They stand 95% accurate to the Hebrew Bible that we read today. And that 5% is just obvious slips of the pen and variations in spelling, which is to be expected considering the conditions that these transcribers faced. 
No other piece of historical literature has been so carefully preserved and historically confirmed. According to the Guinness Book of World Records, the Holy Bible is the best-selling book of all time, with over five billion copies sold and distributed. History points to the reality of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, and the strength, the focus, and the mission of His Holy Church stands today to testify to this truth. The question is, what do you believe?